Hi everybody, this is Christy. I am the Intimate Warrior. I thank you so much for stopping by, and as always, I send you love. I'm going to do my best to get this video out to you today, and uh, I hope that I am not all over the place. I hope that I can speak with great clarity and uh, provide you with uh, greater understanding. I didn't post a video yesterday because I was hit <laughs> with a wall of upgrades. And I just was taking some time. Um, I was laying low. And so my crown was experiencing great, great tension. It's a little bit uh, present here this, this morning and afternoon. It's not as bad as yesterday. And so I, I want to kind of explain to you. You know, I first let me explain that I have actually forgotten already because this is something information that has is fresh within me I forgot that I was actually a premature child um, and I think I put that in one of my videos and I'm sorry I don't recall which one so I have you know been celebrating my birthday April the 23rd is that's the actual that was the the day that I came out of my mom's birthing canal <laughs> my actual due date is August the, the 18th. And how do I know that? The date was given to me by source. Um, and actually was given to me prior to the Lionsgate portal opening. So that marked my one year cycle of accumulating the 12 cell salts. So I was born in, in April, which means I was premature. I was missing, I was lacking in the five remaining um, uh, four to five remaining months of cell salts. So that is something that we have to keep in mind. And this is why I mentioned also in, I guess, some more of the videos that I talk about the cerebral spinal fluid or the sacred secretion practices. Um, but any of my videos, um, I don't know when, so let me just keep going here. I'm babbling. I express that your moon in sign cycle is highly significant yet I haven't done anything different in my practice except I become aware of when my moon in sign is and if you have been listening to me in this video for um, what almost a year or for oh yeah a year I have been going by April 23rd which has been wrong anyway my awareness goes and takes me to April, or I'm sorry, to the, the uh, whatever my Taurus sign is, excuse me, so the Taurus, moon in Taurus. And so I look every single month what, when my moon is going to be in my sign. I, I count back three days and I total my practice or my awareness for 10 total days. I do that calculation, although I don't do anything differently. I have been training myself to focus on love 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days out of the year. That became my practice. And had I not taken up that practice, I wouldn't have completed what I have completed because as I mentioned in this video and the, and the other one, my birthday, I am a Leo. I am a Leo instead of a Taurus. So again, this month I went and I looked at Taurus because I forgot. And until yesterday, as I was experiencing that turmoil, uh, my, my crown pressure, I looked at my calendar and I was like, oh, wait a minute, you are not a Taurus any longer, or you never have been. You are a Leo. And so I, I passed that day anyway, which would have taken me back into um, the end of last month, or the first of this month, counting back. So the point is, you don't have to know and focus on your moon inside. It's 
it became a fun game for me. You know, it's like when I began my health journey, I ended up downloading the My Fitness app. And I treated it as a game. Every single day or you know, every time I ate, I added it in. And it became a great excitement that kept me going on, you know, believing in my journey. And that's exactly what finding out when my moon and sign kind of did for me. It got me excited every single month. Oh, something is going to happen this month or, you know, I'm going to be doing this. Just the awareness that every single month something beautiful could happen. Yet, I do the same thing every single day. More mindfulness, more awareness, and choosing love. And waiting it all out. And um, so a lot of you know that uh, September the 14th became a major mile marker for me, which takes me into my fourth year of my awareness, of my awakening. I have been, we are going through, again, that birthing canal of the equinoxes. There's a death period and a birthing period. Depending on where you are on your journey, you're going to experience both in some way, shape, or form no matter what, and depending on where you are um, in the hemispheres, you're going to experience a death and a rebirth in some way, shape, or form. There's that high initiation of how much more do you want, and let me see how much you have understood. Today, well, last night I was watching, I've been watching <laughs> a lot of movies that are dealing with uh, either... Um, that ironically I am now understanding, you know, lately here, or um, I didn't pick up quite uh, the information maybe, you know, a year ago when I watched the movie, and now I'm watching it again, and I say, oh, wow. So uh, movies that are in relationship to um, self-discovery, you know, enlightenment, um, healing oneself, and um, mythology. Okay, so... Last night I was watching Wrath of the Titans. I think that's the name of it. Of it was, and part two of of it, of that series or movie. And Kronos was in there, Kronos, and I was like Kronos, Kronos, and it kept playing in my mind, Kronos, Kronos, and I was like, I'm going to make a video and talk about Kronos. Well, I well realized that um, the moon is in Saturn today. And so I've been trying to, wanting to also talk about those moon conjunctions. We've had four this month, or we're about to have four um, totaling this month. And the next one is going to be tomorrow. The moon is going to be in Jupiter. But Saturn, you know, specifically here is in relationship, or Kronos, in relationship to time. So I have, though, me before I begin, in my dream state, I'm still healing aspects of abandonment. I am healing um, uh, abuse or, you know, being taken advantage of by the opposite sex um, and things like that. And please, when you are in your dream state or when you are awaking from your dream state, kind of focus on or be more aware of your emotional state as you are in your dream state. I know in my past I had lots of emotional attachment to them. If I was abandoned, I felt that emotion. If, um, you know, something terrible or a boogeyman dream was there, lots of fear. You know, I woke up with that emotion. And I don't know if this only happens with women, um, but I, I I know I've gone through it where I wake up from a dream and it's so vivid, so vivid, and it might be about my husband, um, and I wake up and I'm so upset with him, and I, I, I take it out on him, and I hold that emotion, I used to hold that emotion for days, sometimes weeks, and sometimes months, and I'm like, you did this to me, how could you do this to me in my dream, and you know, all kinds of stuff. One 
if you recall me mentioning, you probably have heard this before, our dream state is when we are actually astral traveling. And it's at, it's our way of, 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 you know, the spirit realm helping us also heal those aspects that we are not quite healing from in our own reality. Yet, if you can really concentrate more on your your experiences and in, in your reality, you can heal internally. What is outside of you is within you. So I I was given um, the other day, you know, experienced a huge flash of white light came through my my inner vision, almost taking up my entire vision, not completely. The outer rim of it uh, was still in darkness. And then I received a, a birth certificate that was completely white. It had writing on it, of course. It was visible, but not visible yet, which means I have not completed something yet. I still have furthermore to go. And um, I ended up seeing this large being so close to me, you know, looking from looking up if I were sitting down um, looking up in this large uh, being was there kind of bending down and caressing my right side of my head and hair the focal point of this being was their their medallion the necklace that they were wearing and I believe it was imprinted all over their their gown and it's, I've seen this several times in my awakening process, and um, it's two pyramids or two triangles nestled point to point on top of each other, which looks like an hourglass. Time. Which is in relationship to Kronos. Even Saturn. Saturn also is in relationship in, um, if you go through, you know, some mythology and, and talking and, and doing some more research, it also is a representation of the Grim Reaper who holds that civil meaning death. With death comes rebirth. Remember. And I don't know, and I can't remember this movie. Yes, but I've been watching lots of, like, alien type of movies. And I forget the name of it, so please forgive me. I want to say Contact, but I know it wasn't that. And it could be. I don't know. Well, it's the movie where there are two aliens and look like big hands. <laughs> Different compared to what I've ever seen an alien to look like. Um, and she was trying to communicate with the aliens. And the way they communicated w with was with some ink splatter that would come out and it would make a circle. Well, that appeared to me just like that in a, um, in a circle from a like fog-like state out of nowhere in a cloud um, just above my, my crown um, to bridge of nose area. And, and then the sword was given to me the same day, um, which was going at a slight angle from left of, if you go to the left of the hemisphere of the brain, to the lower right side, um, I guess, of your shoulder, if you wanted to use that as a, the type of angle that I'm, I'm talking about here, um, with the crucified Christ at the top where the handle is. And then today I want to talk about, because all of this is, I hope, going to connect and make sense to you all. Um, well, you know, when we get to time, you know, the because of, we, are, we are in the moon and Saturn, time compared to Kronos time here, there's a uh, Kairos time, I hope I am pronouncing these correctly, and Kronos time. Kairos time is in relationship to right now in this very moment. So whatever it is that you are doing, if you're listening to this video right now, here in this very moment, you are taking in my words. 
in my experiences. Chronos time is the time that stems from, for example, the time frame that I began to wake up to right now, an X amount of time. And so let's say my message, you have dedicated an X amount of time. Therefore, you can, uh, you're about to receive you know, like that birth certificate that I have, I, I didn't, I was unable to read it. It was up close in my vision, but blurry, which means I was not ready to receive it yet. There's still something going on. And so it means that I am on the cusp of a greater understanding. And I ended up seeing, again, I spoke about um, in some of my other videos about the CSF, and maybe it's labeled, it's called uh, arachnoid matter, or um, the meninges, excuse me, the meninges. And I wanted to talk more about that today because it's highly significant. The pia matter is what births the cerebral spinal fluid. And um, when you're, which talks the minute, so you can call, call the pia matter. It is in relation, in relationship to, excuse me, um, the Virgin Mary and it means tender mother. So the pia, pia matter births the cerebral spinal fluid. And now the, which it is going to take place within the arachnoid matter and hooks up to the dura matter. So you have these three layers and of course, you know, what are we, we are in, um, and so we are in Virgo season, which wraps up, um, after the day of the equinox. So when it goes back to, um, uh, the Paya mutter, mother, mutter, <laughs> Matt Mater, and I'm saying that, wrong the entire time throughout this video so please just bear with me here um, it means tender mother again and it works with uh, the virgin mary and when um, the arachnoid which separates the dura matter from the pia matter now dura mater and i'm still saying matter uh, means hard mother you have, so in between these, you have the arachnoid. Again, it separates the dura matter, which is considered to be the holy place within our brain, from the pia matter of the holy holies within our brain. Now, this is something, ironically, I have been terrified of. After my auto accident, I became terrified of spiders, my fear of spiders, which is something that I have conquered through my awakening process. The arachnoid matter is one of the three meninges. It is the membrane that covers the brain and the spinal cord. It is interposed between the two other meninges and the more superficial, the dura matter and deeper matter, pia, deeper pia matter, and is separated from the pia matter from the subarachnoid space. So I, I'm not sure I mentioned this, but you have the three meninges in the spine and in the brain. When the uh, pia matter is ready to birth the cerebral spinal fluid, that is considered to be when the shashumna is now uh, or the nadis have all united within one column which therefore signifies the sword and therefore the crucified Christ sits at the cross and um, so the every time we are in resonance of love we allow the cerebral spinal fluid to be birthed, to create the holy existence within us. 
you can look at, and I hope to remember to put a picture of this space, that the, the arachnoid mater becomes, it, it's as if it is that veil, because it is this webbing. When the transmission or the fluid can't properly go through that layer of the arachnoid, it can't rise into, into the dura mater, mater and fill the entire, you know, fill your, your brain and work back down into um, the, the spinal column. And so when Jesus talks about casting out your net onto the right side, it also is talking about uh, the right side of the hemisphere of the brain. Because the right side of the hemisphere of, brain, of the brain deals with the feminine aspects. It is very intuitive, very creative. Um, it doesn't require logical thinking. It doesn't even require to see something within them. It's a belief within the right hemisphere of the brain. We can become at peace within the right side of the brain. And every time, again, we are choosing with love, which is our the neutral perspective, we are increasing the feminine aspects of self that are able to mix with the divine aspect of self that has existed throughout humanity for a long time. So that's, you know, I realized this for myself um, a few days ago. You know, I, although I find myself, I can think of times when I am really, or I have been very feminine or using my feminine energy. But it was overproduced. So I gave so much love with tons of expectation or control attached to it. Or I would go the opposite way. And the feminine aspects would, you know, uh, be suppressed. And I would be more masculine, more hard. It takes a complete balance that mix of, of holies to, to come from um, your true source. And so when you have that full connection between, between the root to the crown, this is when, you know, that the sword, your spinal column, and the crucifixion is intact which means that the resurrection of, of the cerebral spinal fluid, which is known as the spirit molecule, which brings forth your I am present, your higher self, your, your godlike self, your inner source, whatever it is that you want to call it. But it doesn't come without a, a trial. Because the Bible also talks about in uh, Revelations about the red dragon that comes seeking to devour the child. When we become consumed still by the ego, the red dragon is led by the emotional body, led by the ego. The child or the cerebral spinal fluid becomes devoured because when we are in a, in a negative emotional state, what happens? The hormones that we secrete become, well, we, we produce way too many hormones, or they don't produce enough one way or the other. Therefore, the hormones are making or suppressing the continued flow of the cerebral spinal fluid. That's why love becomes so significant. And, and that's why now I have mentioned, especially when we get through, you know, certain initiations, you're going to feel squeezed. And this is more of the death of the ego part that you have to go through. And it's a month-to-month-to-month a -month -month process. 
until you are at that cycle of true rebirth. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to have experiences that are going to trigger us because that is a necessary part of our process. And that is also, it works with our meditation. Meditation isn't just the process of us shutting our eyes and trying to you know, calm our mind and heart. It's not just sitting here. When we are in true meditation, we can, we can uh, merge together the stillness of the mind with our experiences. How often are we reacting? True meditation is living your life in stillness. True meditation is living your life in stillness, not reacting to experiences. It doesn't mean we are not going to react, okay? How many times out of the day are you over? Are you having a negative action at the result of an experience that's triggering an emotional state? Now, we have to have the emotion because without that emotion, when we are healing ourselves and purifying ourselves into our I am presence, we, we have to have that reaction. The emotion must come because that emotion is telling us what needs to be healed. When you don't, when you are no longer aware, oh my gosh, I am in this high anxiety, I'm in this fear state, I am in this um, anger, angered state, you are not being mindful, you are not in your meditative state, you are not in the stillness of the mind, which of course is going to kill, kill off the cerebral spinal fluid, which is again the spirit molecule that carries and um, births your I am present, I am presence. But when you are in a more calm state, you know, because when you are angered or in fear, you have, or in anxiety, you have an action that backs it up. That means you're adding two here. You have, or three, you're having an experience that is now triggering you negatively, that you are now acting on or lacking in proper action on. You have three negatives. Now, if you have a um, an experience that you have a reaction to, but you stop yourself and witness your own emotional state and you are not acting in ugliness, bitterness, anger, then you can heal from that aspect. And please keep in mind, it's a process. Early on in your process, you're going to have a reaction that, that might have an action attached to it. It's a part of your process of learning. Learning, oh my gosh, I did this. I said this and then I did this and I just don't like it. You're going to have another chance. Time is going to give you another opportunity to correct that or to see yourself in a different state. We're having an experience to prove to ourselves what it is that we want. You are always in control of what it is that you want. And at every given moment of time, you can change your experiences. You can change your life and you can become anything that you want by being more conscious, more mindful and more aware of what it is that you are going through and change it. So I, I think this is it. I, yeah, so I'm just going to leave it here like this, um, you know, because I'm still kind of uh, recuperating from the, you know, that this crown, crown stuff, and I'm just trying to take it easy. I'm, I'm grateful to be able to make this video for you today. Um, you know, I am this month, next month, 
is um, you know all well, from summer from June and until October is really a, a significant time in my healing process. You know, I was in my auto accident in June. I got married in September. I then, you know, um, I had so many surgeries throughout this time frame as well in October. Um, I, I have lots of healing. I've had other accidents as well. You know, I, I remembered today that also in June, I guess it was in June, it was, it was probably would be on the June 8th or June 9th, which was also the same day. June 9th was the day that I had my auto accident. Um, and it, this was uh, about four years ago or five years ago. No, four years ago, I think. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I fell down the stairs on our way out to um, our vacation. And I broke my tailbone and I injured um, the right side of my, my body pretty good. And I remember I passed out and uh, my husband, you know, they got me up and got me comfortable onto a chair where, you know, the blood would rush back into calm down anyway. And I woke up, I regained consciousness and um, I knew that there was, I knew I had broken my tailbone and my, my shoulder was fine. My body was fine. I was extremely bruised and sore, of course, but I knew there was nothing they can do. <clears throat> excuse me, for my tailbone. It has to heal on its own. And so my husband and I decided to go ahead. I was going to go ahead and take some pain pills, which I already had. So there was no point in going because I knew that's all they're going to do. And uh, we went ahead and went to the beach. But my husband put me in the truck and I remember waking up and I said, are we there yet? And, you know, he was really, he was in a, a state of, uh, what's the word? Um, he was very concerned and then anxious as well. And when I asked him what I was doing, he said, Christy, we haven't even left the driveway yet. I'm going to take you to the hospital. You know, he was really worried. And I was like, oh, and I said, no, no. Um, I no, I'm fine. Let's just go. And so I kept passing out through our drive because, you know, just the pain of it all. But now looking back, that was the beginning of my Kundalini activation. You know, the, the, um, sometimes it takes a, a highly significant thing, a trauma to begin the process of something taking place greater in you. Like my auto accident. Again, it was the beginning of me realizing myself that I was in pain, that I have developed lots of fear, limitations, um, and to teach me about faith and love. It was necessary. You know, then I became a beach body coach coach that was necessary. And it taught me about do I want to belong to something, of course, which I didn't like that type of belonging. And, but it got me, it got me um, focused on personal development or self-discovery, that is, and healing, which took me to faith, which began the process of me opening up to God and got me um, doing those, I'm sorry, letters, uh, which of course was the anniversary, four-year anniversary two days ago, and I wouldn't be here for any significant milestone. And now, you know, you're going to go through time. Your life is going to ask you to reflect on your timetable here, your life, and see, are you healed from those situations? Do you, can you go back and see a, a mile marker of when something greater was always trying to connect with you? Or are you always going to be in sorrow and depression and in hate, judgment of it all? You know, when we are going through time here as well, you know, in the process of that judgment before we are sitting on the throne of God, 
before we witness God. We are asked to be judged. And now this judgment, this word is a terrible word because we see judgment as something terrible. Oh, I'm judging you right now of all of your sins. And of course, sins is a terrible word in itself. Anyway, when, it, when we are upon the throne, it is about our own witnessing of self and how true we are to our path, how much love we have retained within, what have we let go of, and what are we ready for more of. It is our own self-reflection of, can you even do this? Can you even see yourself for who you truly are? You know, I, I've i also been dealing with a little bit of uh, fear and um, because it's been abandonment has been a huge issue, like I've mentioned, and fear of the boogeyman has been, um, or fear of the darkness, whatever you in spirit has uh, been an issue all of my life. And so I know this, I knew this week here was going to be a huge trial period for me. I knew that. I can see it coming. And it's been a, a very, I've been tested. And so I've been, um, I knew that something highly significant was going to come out of this. You have to really be aware of, and when you are really centered in love, you can actually see things coming. That's the great thing about it all, is you can see things coming. And you can, you can always see, you can judge it as a great initiation, a great initiation into your higher self, a lesson period a progress period, a transition period. And whatever it is that you think about things, whether good or bad, it's going to be your your test, your judgment into when you are ready for your higher self. Many of us are, again, and I, I, I say this a lot, on the cusp of receiving our higher self, but many, many of us are. No matter if the energies are, are telling us the time is now, until we are ready internally of that time frame, we can't receive it. But the energies are always pushing us, encouraging us to truly step into our higher self. And I hope that you find your way. This is Christy. Much love, health, and healing your way. I am bringing purpose to your life. Take care.